is already located. And two. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags. Just letting this roll out before I uh, explain what's going on. You're a long way out. Anyways, g'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags, and welcome back to the 1968 campaign, where we are continuing on from the last episode, which I did actually a couple of weeks back. Apologies for the break here. Um, I have returned to my classes, so I've been all tied up trying to uh, get everything up to speed on this end, and a few things have fallen behind. But we're going to make up for that today, and this is going to be an interesting little episode. So I'm going to go to... Oh, we'll keep it at 10 knots. We should be fine, I think. What are the current conditions here? Ambient noise, 81 decibels, and we are sitting right on the line for a strong duct with a strong layer, which is going to be very, very useful. So just to recap for those who have uh, forgotten the final details of the last episode, we have been hunting a submarine tender fleet and a resupply fleet. The problem is we kept getting attacked on the way to it, to the point where I've just about run out of weapons. What you see loaded in the tubes right now is almost everything I have. I have three Mark 16s in the tubes, three Mark 16s in storage, and a single Mark 37 remaining on this submarine. That's it. I've got seven shots, and I have to kill this fleet. So, I'm not going to be able to engage the escorts in this one. I'm going to have to bum rush the tanker if we have got the right fleet. I have to assume at this point we have finally managed to make it to the correct fleet. It was in the right spot and it is a surface fleet. You should probably actually start looking at that now. But um, yes, wow, it is noisy in the water, isn't it? Hmm. That's good. That's very good considering this situation. But yes, I'm going to have to try and take them out with the crap torpedoes. And that's reading as a Cashin, which makes sense. A tender fleet will most certainly have escorts. I don't know what S2 is all the way out there, and it's a lonesome. What are you, my friend? Uh, not quite. That may be our target. Alright, so let's go back and see what S3 is. And there's the pinging started. We don't want the pinging. The pinging is bad at this point. Although I don't think they're going to be able to hear crap at this point. This much noise in the water. I think we're okay. Serious? We may actually have a biological. So let's not sink the blue whale. Greenpeace will have my ass. That can't be right. That can't be right. What have we got? Let's double check this. The only thing that even close to corresponds to that signature is blue whales. So we have a pair of blue whales in the middle of the battlefield. 
If I screw up my shots here, I'm going to have Greta Thunberg screaming how dare you at the top of her lungs at me. Um, Alright, so this is actually a bit of a problem too. There is no way that transport or that service ship is only under escort by one ship. We have two biologicals in the middle. We're missing at least one ship at this point. 5 kilyards. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We are going to go... Conditions. Let's go to... Uh, change that. 250. They do appear to be heading in this direction. over well over a thousand feet here but we're going to go down deep i'm going to go down deep i'm going to use a little bit of time acceleration and probably a little bit of editing in the uh the editing software post so you don't have to wait around through it all and i'm just going to sit and see whether or not these two will actually pass overhead pop up hopefully behind the keshin stick my torp straight into our friend over here sierra 2 and then get the hell out of here. I'm not even going to bother engaging the Keshin. I might fire whatever torpedoes I have remaining in his general direction and then I'm going to go because if, if they don't change course, and this is a big thing, if I can get down deep enough that they won't detect me, I might even go to silent running. In this kind of noise, 81 decibels, this kind of mess in the water, strong duct, strong layer, that deep, it's possible the Keshin won't actually detect me when it passes over the top of me. Maybe. The AI can be funky on this difficulty level, but there is at least a possibility that it might not realise that I'm here. And if that's the case, and I can get close to S2 without it detecting me, I might be able to pop up and nail it before it realises I'm there. Before it starts manoeuvring, when I have the highest chance of hitting it with my torps. Alright, so we've done a small time jump here. We have confirmed, we do in fact have a blue whale. So yes, we do not want to hit the blue whale. And we do now have a positive track on our surface vessel. So that is our target, or at least I'm pretty sure that is our target, that's what we're after. But it is changing course. Concerns me. I don't think the Cashin should have been able to detect me. And it doesn't appear to be turning away from me. It's not attempting to run at this point. So that's not a concern. What's this thing's top speed? Top speed, 13.5 knots, so it can't get away from me at the very least. I've just got to let it get as close as it possibly can. It's currently at 11.3 kiloyards. The cache in here is a little bit closer. It's floating at around 6.2. It's well within kill range if I had, you know, extra Mark 37s to spare, but unfortunately at the moment I just cannot afford to spare them for this damn cache in. Just let time accelerate a little bit further here and just see what they do. The Cashin seems to be listening. Contact on Sierra 4, bearing 3, 2, 8, 
It is listening. It's not pinging though. It's gone quiet. It only pinged earlier on and now it's gone all silent. So I'm assuming... Well, that was a ping. And it's close enough now it could potentially detect me. So... is turning away. Just time accelerate a little bit further. No weapons firing yet though, so... Sierra 2 is still beelining directly towards us. Sierra 2 is reading at 6. The cashin is still holding its course. 6-5 to Sierra 2. The cashin is turning in our direction and S2 is turning away. Alright, we've been made. I reckon we've been made. Set depth. We've got to bring it up to 200. Because we can't fire these at below 250 meters. Yep, she's turning away. We've been made. All right. 28 knots. Two, eight, nine. Maneuvering eye. We'll have torpedoes to dodge here in a second. I'm going to have to hit the handbrake. Seven hundred and surface running. I'm gonna have to fire the thirty seven at the cashin. There's no way she doesn't know that I'm there now. We're at five hundred feet. What's the range of the cashin? We are cavitating. Yeah, cavitating. That's fine. Alright, full reverse on the engines. Back to speed. Now that wire is going to break, but that's fine. I'm not too concerned about that. This one short. Yeah, cool. That's fine. All right. Cashin was bloody accurate with those shots. Damage control. Hull is at eighty nine. deeper. Yeah, maybe coming to the surface so short wasn't such a great idea. Because we're still... Still 5 million yards away. And I want to get closer to confirm the shot. That's got the cash in turning at the very least. Damage control. Looks like the hits only were on the outer hull. Seem to be fine otherwise. Torpedo in the water. That is completely expected at this point. No, not ultra quiet. What am I doing? Wait. 
hopefully. So we're gonna have to turn. Yes, we have to change that. We're gonna have to turn into this torpedo. It's going to cost us time on getting to our ship. Right, we should be fine now. Turn on to controller. Yeah, it's going to S pattern, that's fine. Passion has cleared our torpedo. It missed as expected. And it's in our baffles at the moment, which is not good. Alright, so depth. No, we're still 200. No, we're not. We're manually adjusted. Alright. Back to 200 feet. Cashin can turn around and catch us here, and it can obviously fire um, depth charges at range. So we need to get our shots off as quickly as we can. Hopefully they'll hit. Hopefully. Yes, that's fine. Just get us to 200 feet. So I'm going to go for a spread of four, and that will give us... give us two shots remaining. It's entirely possible I miss all these. These torpedoes are terrible. As I said, they're also inaccurate to real life. The um, the real life torpedoes by the end of World War II at least had wake following capability. This is 1968. These had these had advanced wake following at this point or more a more reliable version of the same technology on it. But the ones that we get in cold waters are completely dumb fire. They have no guidance of any kind. They will not follow. Nothing. There's there's nothing they can do. These are essentially mid World War II torpedoes in 1968, which is uh, no, no, that's that's not how it works. Right, so 200 feet. Range 3.8 kilo yards. All right, we're gonna bang on the brakes. Being turns. The con sonar no longer cavitating. Con maneuvering, making turns for. All right, we are at five. five knots, maneuvering eye. Up below 180. I thought it was 250. God, they're worse than I thought. Alright, pre-speed. Get us to 150 then. The lungs are here. We are cavitating. Alright, hold. What's our speed settings? Hold at 10. We have two torps left. Set depth. 500. Back to flank. Before the cache and catches up to us. And it's got to be close. Hope the blue whales don't get in the way. Hope Sierra 2 doesn't turn. The only thing these things have going for them is they are reasonably fast. Calling 
at 700. So, speed this up a little. Please tell me that circle is going to be accurate. One hits and it did kill the target. <sighs> totally worth it. That's all we needed to do. Okay, so with that done. I only have two torpedoes left, I need to know where the hell this cache has gotten itself to. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra 3, bearing 2, 3, 7. I'm more interested in Sierra 1. Did she turn and follow us? Is she chasing us down? What is she doing at the moment? And is Sierra 1's torpedo about to sink Sierra 3? Did the Russians just kill a blue whale? right there. That would be there. Alright. Still no feed from Sierra 1. Control still reading fine. And those pings are coming from Con Helm. our torpedo tracking all the way out here. Make depth four, five, eight, nine, nine. Nice. Once we're up a periscope depth, I'm not going to pop the red. There's the cache. Seven knots. She's listening. 
she's trying to work out where the hell we are. I've only got two surface runners to fight it with. I'm half tempted to just spam these two out, turn and run, and hopefully have them turn her away from me so she doesn't hear me exit. I'm thinking that is probably going to be the best bet and then just run for the map border probably over, well it doesn't really matter it's about the same distance either way but probably run this way which would be towards Greenland, exit the area and then I'm, I'm out of torps I've, I've got to go back to Holy Lock and get a resupply so yeah we might do that I'll do one straight across the bullseye Actually, no. I'm going to aim here. And then I'm going to put this one straight across the bullseye. They'll either hit or they won't. In either case, Come right to I plan to be far, 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 far away from here. Let's go to a thousand feet. Let's head away. She's still sitting at seven. She's either going to explode or she's not. She's turning, torpedoes have gotten close. Nah, they didn't hit her. Which was expected, so that's not really a major issue. Let's go a little deeper, let's take it... Actually, no, let's not, we've got hull damage. So let's just stick it a thousand feet and leave it at that. Alright, so from here, I'm just going to run time acceleration until we hit the map border, because as of now, I am completely out of all stores that I can potentially use to fight the Cashin. That was just a ballpark shot at best to see whether or not I can actually get him and I wasn't too concerned whether or not I hit or not more than anything just to distract him and have him pinging and looking around this area for an attack while I'm GTFO so really that's about it unless he manages to catch me which is technically possible but I'm not actually expecting that he will um, he is faster but I am a thousand feet down by the time he hits the surface area where I'm at with depth charges, I'm going to be well out of the area by the time they've sunk down for them to actually hit. And I don't think at a thousand feet the Cashins can actually anticipate the speed to be able to put them in front of me. And even if they do, I should know that they're coming and be able to maneuver away from them. So it shouldn't be an issue regardless. And he can chase me all the way to the map border if it wants. Once I hit the red box over here, I can leave regardless. So I'm going to let this one run. And we'll see you guys at the, unless something interesting happens, at the mission results. Alright, so we managed to exit the zone faster than expected. We sunk the target, the Cashin escaped, and it was only one escort. There were no additional ships that I missed, which I'm, I'm honestly really surprised about. I would have expected another escort more than anything else. No systems damage, minor out of hull damage, and obviously weapons remaining absolutely nothing this point we are dead uh good to hear you intercepted and destroyed the enemy replenishment resource keep up the good work further orders to be transmitted on this down link stand by for orders if those orders are not go and get some more torpedoes you idiot i don't care all right so we have world news quiet seas nato warships and submarines have taken up several new strate strategic locations including some around the greenland sea in response to significant reduced soviet naval activity sources close to the pentagon say the war is taking a heavy toll on enemy naval operations well it bloody should be at this point i've sunk more novembers than they ever actually built um and their supply lines continue to be heavily strained 
Recent NATO gains at sea have decreased the number of warships needed to maintain control in several regions. Many vessels from these regions have rapidly been reassigned to escort duties to better protect convoys carrying much needed arms and armor men from the United States to the United Kingdom. Cool. All right. How are we doing? Return immediately to Holy Lock, Scotland for repairs and to replenish sores. Good. They got the idea. They got the memo. So, continue on course. So, that is pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go down here to this nice little green box. It's going to load me up with torpedoes. And then, hopefully, make my way over there to sink what's, uh, what's left of the Soviet Navy. It looks like they're pretty much under control everywhere on the map except Germany. Anyways, guys, until next time, remember to click that like button if you did. Actually, we'll have a quick look at where we are up to on the campaign before I do that. Commander Mags, USS Plunger, SSN 595, 31 days at war. For how long this campaign's been running, I know that's kind of funny, but we've only been at war apparently for 31 days. Mission accomplished, 13. Uh, no seal inser insertions or land strikes, they only happen in the later campaigns, unfortunately. Capital ship sunk, 2. Other warships sunk, 16, 23, 12, 53. Total tonnage, 267,420 tons. And the Admiral is happy, and I've got a pocket full of medals. Very nice. Anyways, ladies and gents, until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, take care.